Octopus are walking on shore. Octopuses are some of the most well-known sea creatures with their curious eight tentacles, incredible intelligence, camera-like eyeballs and slimy bodies. However, a local marine guide from Wales, upon returning from a sunset dolphin watching expedition, witnessed an octopus in a place where he never expected to see one, on dry land. He reported seeing over two dozen of the creatures crawling up out of the water on the tips of their tentacles and moving onto the sand as though part of some mass migration, and soon other locals made reports of a similar nature. It is not unheard of for octopi to take a stroll outside of the water occasionally. Those that live in shallow waters near tide pools frequently use the tips of their tentacles to crawl from pool to pool in search of prey, sometimes embarking on longer stretches if they are especially unlucky in the hunt. A popular octopus at the National Aquarium of New Zealand proved his prowess as an escape artist by crawling out of his tank, across the room, down a drainage pipe and into the sea. However, scientists are baffled as to why so many of the creatures were existing in a group to such a sandy stretch of beach, one with no tide pools or chance of finding food. They breathe through gills and can only survive out of water for very short stretches of time and must remain moist in order to be able to absorb oxygen from the water on their skin, which is why they have never been known to attempt such a long stretch out of the water. Several octopuses were discovered the next morning having died after drying out too much. Scientists are baffled as to what could cause these small, hand-sized cephalopods to behave in such a dangerous manner. It is possible that a huge change in their environment, brought on by incredibly rough seas around the time that they were spotted, local pollution, or an unusually low tide, could have disorientated the octopi enough that they mistakenly clambered onto dry land. Other theories include illness or parasitic infection, although the creatures that were discovered the next morning appeared to have been in perfect health and died from drying out rather than any infection. Alarmingly, scientists don't know what has caused these octopuses to behave in this manner and are carefully studying the species for any clues. Abandoned Lifeboat on Bouvet Island Bouvet Island is cold, Covered in glaciers, its sides rise with tall, icy cliffs, and most surprisingly, it's positioned on top of an active volcano. This isolated and remote place lies between the tip of Africa and the coldest continent on Earth. It is an extremely inaccessible island, and the only way people really reach there in modern times is using helicopters. If one was to end up there by misfortune and bad luck, there is no telling how or if they would be found. Despite its dangerous and wild landscape, weather researchers have considered its position important and potentially helpful, a great place to put a weather tower. For this reason, in 1964, a team was sent to scope out the island and investigate a new area created by a lava flow from 10 years earlier. That was when the lifeboat was discovered. Perhaps even more strange than the lifeboat itself was the fact that it had no markings or signposts of where it might have originated from. It had no motor or sails, and all that was found were some oars, a flattened copper tank, and a barrel. There was not even any evidence that people had stayed on the island or passed away on the island. In the waters surrounding the area, there were no remnants of a larger ship that might hint where the lifeboat and any people on it might have come from. There was simply nothing else. Unable to find anything else leading to information about the lifeboat, it was left there and two years after, when another team was sent to examine the island, it had disappeared. This led to even more confusion and mystery surrounding the lifeboat. Researchers were left to only wonder about the people who might have been on the island at some point, but also the lifeboat that had put them there. In the end, it was a Reddit post containing research and information about Bouvet Island and the mysterious lifeboat that answered the questions to arise from its discovery. As it turned out, it was left by a small group that were forced to wait out inclement weather for three days, until they were retrieved by helicopter, which makes for a heartwarming and relieving end to the mystery. Mysterious shards of glass are strewn across miles of desert. About ten years ago, throughout Chile's Atacama Desert, 
several glass shards were found covering a large span described as a corridor of glass reaching for 75 kilometers. There are simply too many shards of glass to be counted, though the strange fragments do seem to have a few sites they cluster around more densely. The shards are also rather varied, not uniform by any means, with some large pieces of glass reaching 50 centimeters across. Again, there is not a specific consistent texture maintained throughout them all. Scientists have reported that some features look nice and smooth, and others appear rough. It has also been said that the glass looks as though it has been folded or somehow manipulated to take a twisted shape. Though, as we all know, glass really isn't malleable. Lead author and planetary geologist Peter Schultz, a professor emeritus at Brown University, said in a new study taking a peek at this decade-long puzzle, Many have morphologies indicative of sliding, shearing, twisting, rolling and folding, in some case more than twice, before being fully quenched. While we might have only stumbled across these desert shards ten years ago, it has been predicted that they have been here since around 12,000 years ago, though we do not know what caused them to appear, nor exactly how they appeared. One of the first hypotheses was that the strange glass was due to a large meteor exploding inside Earth's atmosphere. A big airburst upon exploding then pushed the fragments of hot space rock into the surface of the desert, with the shards then melting the sand and soil upon impact. This theory does sound somewhat far-fetched, though in reality it really is a serious contender in explaining just how these shards got here. A few other places around the planet have also seen similar strange glass appearances and meteoric explosions have often been deemed the most likely explanation. Why would the Atacama Desert shards be any different? That being said, there are some other explanations too. It is possible that these shards could have formed in a natural surface fire, hot enough to act like a furnace. While the other explanation is still being considered, Schultz and his team have said that the meteoric rock explanation is a more likely explanation here in light of their new study. The team collected more than 300 samples of the glass and examined them under an electron microscope using a method called spectroscopy to look at the chemical composition. The team says that this analysis has revealed there is something extraterrestrial about the glass, that it is not entirely from Earth. According to Schultz, this is the first time we have been able to provide clear evidence that some glass on Earth is the result of thermal radiation and winds from a fireball that exploded not too far above the surface. Within the glass shards, there were thousands of exotic mineral grains, rarely seen on Earth. Upon the odd occasion that they are detected on Earth, they have only been found in extraterrestrial rocks, such as meteorites. One particular mineral, extraterrestrial cubanite, has been identified in NASA's Stardust mission in 2004, which took samples from the comet WILD-2. Now, with the composition analysis completed, scientists have suggested that whatever it was that left those shards all those years ago may have had a similar makeup to WILD-2, with similar elements and minerals being within both. We might never find a specific answer to this question, though our theories do seem to be getting more and more accurate. An English Exorcism Manual Sometimes the most amazing discoveries are not hidden from view, but have been kept in plain sight for hundreds of years. This was the case with an English Exorcism Manual that was recently discovered to have been an unknown part of the prominent Harley collection of ancient manuscripts for hundreds of years. The document in question was catalogued under the nondescript marker Harley MS 2874 and seemed rather bland and unassuming. Contributing to the misunderstanding of its true nature was the fact that in 1808, a comprehensive catalogue of the contents was conducted which listed the manuscript in question as a common Christian liturgical prayer book called a breviary published sometime during the 14th century. The document opens with strange and indecipherable words in red print, which were likely some sort of title for the manuscript but could not be understood. During a recent catalogue of the Harley collection, it was noted that the actual contents of the manuscript does not resemble anything close to what you would expect to find in a breviary. The words inside are illegible at first glance, and upon closer inspection, 
researchers realized that they were encrypted using a well-known code, wherein vowels are replaced by their successive letter. Once this was understood, the strange, unreadable title could be reread as a Latin phrase translated to mean the conjuration of evil spirits. The rest of the text was quickly decoded to be an exorcism manual that details what rituals were employed to drive out demons from those who were possessed in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, Rome. This is not the first known copy of this book, as currently there are around 30 copies of The Conjuration of Evil Spirits, but these known copies were printed in Rome or Venice, while the Harley manuscript is handwritten. The existing print versions were published throughout the 15th and 16th centuries, and researchers dated the Harley manuscript to this period as well, judging it to have been copied out around the year 1500. This hand-copied English version is unique from its Italian counterparts in its encrypted writing, and was likely encoded by a scribe, whom researchers guess was a monk of Bury St. Edmunds in England due to the presence of a reused pardon to the abbot of the monastery as the first page. This discovery is significant because Christian dispossession manuals were not commonly found in England during this time, meaning that the scribe was likely nervous or uneasy about transcribing the contents, perhaps also due to the presence of several phrases that aimed to directly conjure the devil. The monk was wary of making a manuscript that could be used in the future to potentially perform illicit dark magic rituals to communicate with demons to use them for personal gain. This discovery provides a glimpse into the minds of religious practitioners of the time, where frequently magic and religion were interchangeable. Fossils found in Batagaika Crater Deep in the permafrost of Siberia lies an enormous megaslump crater known as the Batagaika Crater. At around 1 km long and over 86 meters deep, this massive void in the Earth is only increasing in size and at a rapid rate. The area around Batagaika is composed of dense, hard permafrost created by an ice freezing into the ground and being buried for thousands of years, resulting in layers of packed ice and sediment. However, around 60 years ago, the area fell victim to the rapid deforestation that has become so common in the modern world, and there were not enough trees left to adequately shade the ground, causing the permafrost to slowly thaw and collapse, creating the massive crater. And while locals in the region avoid it at all costs and view it superstitiously as a door to the underworld, what this massive hole in the permafrost can reveal about the past is of great interest to scientists. In much the same way that analysis of the rings of a felled tree can tell stories of climates and weather events from the past, so can the collapsed permafrost as they reveal through exposed sediment layers what the soil and earth composition was like millions of years ago. Nowhere else in the world is there such a visible and complete record of almost every change in climate for the last 200,000 years, so scientists have moved quickly to take advantage of the situation. And this knowledge of past climates is vital as scientists try to determine what effects global warming will continue to have on the delicate and already precarious permafrost layer and, consequently, what that deterioration will mean for the rest of the world. Interestingly, knowledge of past climate changes and the potential effects of modern-day climate change is not the only interesting thing that has turned up in the ever-widening Siberian crater. As the permafrost has melted down and revealed layers of the past, several Ice Age fossils have been revealed that would otherwise have remained stuck under the hardened permafrost forever. Among the finds was a 40,000-year-old foal that was found perfectly preserved, with even its hair still totally intact. The permafrost acts as an enormous freezer of sorts for the ancient prehistoric animals who had lost their lives and were overtaken by the ice, allowing them to remain frozen and protected from the elements until the widening Batagaika revealed them to scientists as perfectly preserved time capsules of the distant past. Although the melting permafrost and rapidly growing crater is an immense cause for concern and an indication of just how fragile the seemingly tough Siberian permafrost truly is when faced with human intervention and global warming, 
scientists have been able to take advantage of a bad situation by using it as an opportunity to learn about the distant past. It's not often that such clear examples of what the Earth looked like thousands of years ago come to light, and the well-defined sediment history combined with dozens of perfectly preserved fossils have allowed scientists to study and learn an immense amount about what the Siberian climate was like thousands of years ago, as well as how continued human intervention and global warming might continue to affect the region and the planet in general. Harvard scientists claim to have found the physical source of consciousness. Human consciousness has been one of life's greatest enduring mysteries, puzzling theorists, scientists and philosophers alike for thousands of years. But now, scientists have published a study that suggests that we might be one step closer to solving this mystery once and for all. The past few decades have brought multiple leaps and bounds in the field of neuroscience as technology has allowed researchers to dive deeper into the human brain than ever before. This has allowed us to be able to track brain activity throughout multiple stages of consciousness and alertness as scientists attempted to piece together how all of these electrical signals come together to create a brain that is unique from most other organisms in its awareness of its own existence. This study highlights research that pinpoints a network of three specific brain regions that appear to be related to consciousness in some way. For many years, consciousness has been considered to consist of two parts, an arousal portion and an awareness portion. And while the arousal portion has been linked to the brain stem, the awareness portion of consciousness has been much harder to pin down although many researchers had suspicions that it lay somewhere on the outer layer of the brain. The Harvard study not only pinpointed the exact brainstem region that generates arousal, but it also found two regions of the cortex that seem to work in conjunction to form awareness and thus consciousness. Lead researcher Michael Fox from the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center at Harvard Medical School spoke on the impressive significance of these findings by saying that for the first time, we have found a connection between the brainstem region involved in arousal and regions involved in awareness, two prerequisites for consciousness. A lot of pieces of evidence all came together to point to this network playing a role in human consciousness. To arrive at this discovery, the team deeply analyzed the brain activity of patients who were unconscious or in a comatose state due to brain lesions and compared them to the brain activity of patients who had also experienced brain lesions but had maintained consciousness in order to try to pinpoint the differences between the two groups. Once the regions in question were identified, the researchers verified their conclusions with fMRI scans of 45 patients in vegetative states to ensure that they all experienced disruptions in the network between these three regions. Their findings were further verified by these scans, and it seems that science might have, at last, taken us one step closer to discovering the underlying factors of humanity. But why does this research matter? For starters, it helps to answer the enduring and pervasive question, what does it mean to be human? But in a more practical and worldly sense, understanding the physical source of consciousness not only helps scientists and doctors to develop a more holistic understanding of the brain regions and the mysterious bases of neurology, but it could potentially also help in the treatment for patients in a vegetative state who are alive but lack consciousness. Researchers hope that brain stimulation of the consciousness centers of the brain could lead to the development of a treatment for these individuals. Understanding the basis of consciousness can lead to innovations of all fields of science, as consciousness is the foundation of all aspects of humanity. For now, however, independent research is needed to confirm these exciting results and allow steps to be taken in developing treatments for vegetative patients and individuals with disorders of the consciousness. The Rhodope Skull the main part of the Rhodope mountain range lies in Bulgaria, with around 20% spilling over the border into Greece. The mountains themselves are absolutely stunning, with luscious greenery covering the countless river gorges that are a prominent feature of the area. As an ecological and cultural crossroad between Europe, Asia and the Mediterranean, the Rhodope mountains are extremely biodiverse. 
Many species, ranging from big bears to small squirrels, call the range their home. But what if we told you that, over a thousand years ago, the Rodope Mountains were home to some less conventional creatures, shall we say? In 2001, a man named Roman Genshev came across something truly bizarre whilst hiking in the Rodope Mountains. Roman lived in Plovdiv, the cultural centre of Bulgaria just north of the mountains, a city which, thousands of years ago, was part of the ancient Greek Empire. But whether the discovery was actually so coincidental is our first mystery. Roman claimed that he had been experiencing extremely vivid dreams for some time prior to his mysterious discovery, and he felt as if somebody had been guiding him towards it. It was like Roman had made a connection with something supernatural. He claimed that the dreams had guided him to a spot where figures in strange silver dresses gathered in the Road Oak Mountains. Lo and behold, upon venturing up there, he found something truly bizarre. Just a little way below the ground's surface, Roman saw something hard and beige-coloured. After clearing away the mud, the object revealed itself. It was a skull, but not just any old skull. The skull that Roman found was truly bizarre. It resembled no known creature and looked severely deformed. The front of the skull was inverted, very flat, and the nose, mouth, and eye sockets looked markedly different to anything that a human or animal would possess. The eyes were large, pointing diagonally upwards. The mouth was thin and short, with two cavities either side of it. The nose drew into the mouth, and the top of the skull lent itself to holding a rather large brain. Researchers and archaeologists alike were completely baffled. They had never seen anything like this before, and, in fact, could not even link the skull to any prehistoric beings that may have been fossilized. The skull weighed around 500 grams, and next to it, a small piece of metal weighing nearly a kilo was also discovered. However, after more research and even more bemusement, the project was unofficially called off in 2002. To this day, nobody quite knows what the dreams that Roman experienced really meant, or how they guided him to the Rodope skull. It must be said that this is one of few occasions where scientists have come together and agreed that an extraterrestrial being may be responsible for this truly strange relic. Nearly 8,000 strange blue lakes have appeared in Antarctica. Researchers claim that a myriad of bright blue lakes have mysteriously formed in eastern Antarctica. These lakes are rapidly appearing on the continent's icy sheets and are beginning to deeply concern scientists. These lakes, though unexpected, are not a first time happening. Between 2011 and 2014 in Greenland, similar lakes were forming on the country's ice sheets, resulting in a shocking trillion tons worth of lost ice melted into thousands of lakes. In the UK, a team of scientists have been studying the meteorological images and findings regarding the Landhoved Glacier in eastern Antarctica. In between the years 2000 and 2013, it was discovered that almost 8,000 lakes have appeared. In the span of 13 short years, a plethora of these ice lakes have covered the surface of eastern Antarctica. Many of these lakes are referred to as meltwater lakes or as supraglacial. This means that they seem to drain the floating ice below them, endangering the whole ice shelf they have formed on as it could disbalance the ice-to-water ratio. The frightful part of this news is that scientists believed prior to this discovery that eastern Antarctica was doing okay with the rising ocean temperatures and have neglected observing it in favour of the much weaker and more susceptible to heat Antarctic Peninsula. This proves that we know little about supraglacial lakes and how they might impact the icy continent further. Stuart Jameson, from Durham University, one of the researchers, has stated the East Antarctic is part of the continent where people have for quite a long time assumed that it's relatively stable. There's not a huge amount of change, it's very, very cold, and so it's only very recently that the first supraglacial lakes on top of the ice were identified. These lakes are not eternal. They disappear. Sometimes they refreeze, which is fortunate when it happens, but sometimes they overflow into surface rivers, which can lead to travesty. As shown by Greenland's disintegrating ice sheets, 
These lakes will likely speed up the ice melting and rising ocean level process. The effects of climate change are becoming increasingly more undeniable. In the summers of 2012 and 2013, the number of new lakes forming rose by a frightful 36%, especially in the area of Langhovts Glacier. Fortunately, this is not the beginning of the end yet. However, should things continue down this path, it will lead to a thousand problems in the future. 2016 was the hottest recorded summer in Antarctic history so far, causing even more supraglacial lakes. In Jameson's own words, the size of the lakes are probably not big enough to do much at present, but if climate warming continues in the future, we can only expect the size and number of these lakes to increase. Mysterious rumblings from inside Mars detected by NASA lander NASA's InSight lander detected a mysterious rumbling from inside Mars. While it is unclear currently what these rumblings are, early reports from scientists are that they could be due to a sudden release of energy from the center of Mars. What scientists do know is that the rumblings are thought to have begun in a place known as Cerberus Fosse a place on Mars where there have been two other reports of similar seismic activity. Whilst any similar behavior like this on Earth would more than likely be labeled an earthquake, Mars quakes are not the same thing. According to leading scientist Dr. Kawamura, there are two types of quakes that occur on Mars. One is likened to a moonquake and one similar to that of an earthquake. These rumblings are being compared to more of an Earth-like quake. Interestingly, the InSight Mars lander had captured similar strong seismic events a year ago. One of the theories is that because Mars has active volcanic regions that can cause similar rumblings, the idea is that these regions are causing the rumblings. The InSight lander's seismometer is incredibly sensitive and fortunately for scientists, this discovery comes as the windy season on Mars is dying down. Scientists have said that these winds on Mars can directly affect these sensors, so collecting data is much easier when these storms aren't so disruptive. NASA plans to keep the seismometer active for a couple of months. During that time, they hope that InSight can record some more data that will help scientists better understand this mysterious phenomenon. NASA rover discovers weird string-like object on Mars. Trash is something that everyone is familiar with littering the surface and even the atmosphere of our own planet Earth but you typically do not expect to find trash in faraway space locales such as Mars. Yet, that is exactly what has happened as the Mars rover encountered several instances of cast-off rocket landing gear in the form of crumpled paper and tangles of cord. Although at first these items were dubbed mystery items by researchers, they quickly realized that these obstacles were in fact almost certainly debris from the 2021 landing of the Perseverance rover which discarded its giant supersonic landing parachute and landing gear. The strange image of the mysterious space string went viral, however, before NASA could confirm the theory that it was nothing more than trash placed there by humans. And the internet demanded to know what the odd, spaghetti-like string was and whether it had anything to do with the planet of Mars itself. However, although when it comes to space, the real answer is really boring, in this case, Researchers had to break the news gently that the photograph taken by the Mars rover was not a strange life form, nor was it proof of an alien civilization. It was nothing more than cast off debris from a recent mission. And although spreading trash around planets besides our own seems negative, it is in some ways unavoidable, as landing spacecraft on the planet is a rather trash filled affair. To slow the landing, which occurs at speeds of around 12,000 miles per hour, as the spacecraft bursts through the planet's atmosphere, a supersonic parachute, rocket-powered landing gear, and a heat shield are required. In the case of the mystery items found on Mars, the tangle of rope was likely discarded from the parachute, and the crumpled, papery material was almost certainly a cast-off from the landing gear. Because it would require an incredible number of resources to collect these pieces of debris, the gear, parachute, and shield are left behind as the spacecraft or rover begins their scientific journey across the planet. Although researchers are always on the lookout for anomalies within the dusty red planet, which holds great promise for the discovery of extraterrestrial life, sometimes the things that are found are actually not remarkable and were unwittingly placed there by none other than us humans.
but what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.